Oh my old oh man, the dust man. Actually, thinking about it, we better not do that, have we? There's been a tragedy in Scotland, haven't there? So uh, we better not do that one. You know, some people have asked me why I don't use a plectrum. Well, I've got plenty. They're up here. I'll show you. And uh, they're in here in that dish and, and in fact I'll tell you what it, the light's not very good in here I'll relocate to the kitchen and show you properly well I found out that uh, the reason I do my video in, in here when it's dark is because I put a bit of light in it's quite a light airy small space and you know it comes out better if I do it in the room you can't see anything so what I'm going to do as I said I'll, I've suddenly realised this dish, let me, I've got to tip the camera, sorry. Right. This dish had a plectrum in it. Someone asked me why I don't use a plectrum. And there was one in this dish. It's there. You better see that. Well, what the heck, that's been in my guitar case. And, and I bought that guitar when I was 17. And I suddenly realised, you know, this dish is actually a potted history you know it's a ditch full of history there's loads of stuff in it I'll show you and uh, I don't know if you know or not but every house used to have one of these on either the mantelpiece or the on the mantelpiece or you know the sideboard something like that I don't know nowadays um, the trouble is Houses are a bit clinical, aren't they? Most houses are clinical today. So we'll just see what we've got. And I was just thinking that there's loads of history in there. I mean, these plectrums, which I don't use, as you've seen, but these are newish ones. I don't know where they came from. Because remember, I started playing when I was 17, then I found I couldn't. So I've restarted again a few years ago. Um, but there's one here I've noticed. Somewhere. Look at that. Can you see? That says Arnie Ball. Right, well, <laughs> I don't know if you remember him, but uh, I mean, that's years old, that is. And these others, are, I think I found one or two on the riverbank, to be honest. So I've got about half a dozen here that I never use, but uh, that we've collected over the years. But other things of interest, you know. I mean, this is my history. They're not worth anything, but that, it's a 12-bore cartridge remover. You know, when you shoot the gun and the cartridge swells in the barrel, you just peg it with that and pull it out. So that's what that is. Uh, what else have we got? An old, it's blank, there's nothing in it, a 303 cartridge, and that used to be in my grandfather's drawer. Like I said, every house has a, you know, used to have most today aren't well they're sterilized aren't they they're boring but um i still have this and i've got a, a drawer where i put um where i put i just put stuff and i've got a box upstairs just a plastic box and it's got little nuts and bolts in and some of them were what i stripped from radios i mean this it's actually a blade off a turbocharger and it's made in harmonic. And while I was at work, I got one, and it's actually worn off now. We're polishing it, but I had my name engraved on it, and had a hole in it. If you can see there, and we had it on a key ring. But the trouble is, that blooming sharp edge it bets holes in your pocket. So we we binned that one. But other stuff. I mean, recent history, right? That's. Uh, it was a key, I was given a scooter, one of these little scooters and these Japanese, uh, sorry, Chinese or Taiwanese things. Well, everyone told me, no, don't mend it, it's no good. But it didn't have a key, so I had to make that. And it had to go through the barrel to turn it on. So that was the key I made for that. And what else have we got? I mean, that, if you remember seeing me Yamaha on the calendar I did, the photograph, but well, these are... 
uh, number plate nuts and bolts they used to use. Well I bought those uh, to fit the fairing on, you know. So, I mean, let me have been there years. And I've always used nail clippers. Everyone says don't use, well I've had them many, many years. I don't know how long. I've cut my nails with them when you're playing guitars, you know, you have to keep short nails. So I've used that. Tweezers, which are always useful. These are old ones, really old ones. They don't work very well at all. And then, I don't quite know where they came from, but I've got two newish ones. So, you know, when you get old, you get a long eyebrow or something like that. You've got to pluck them anyway, like women. So that's that. You've seen that. Two old nail files. Really worn out ones. I don't know how old they are. I mean, that one is ancient, isn't it? You know. So, I'm in a bowl of history. You won't believe it. A little drill that seems to be broken off. You can never find one. No, it hasn't been broken off. Never find one. You know, when I want one, and there's one in this dish. There's everything there. Look at that. You take your, um, you want to take a valve out, and there used to be these, and this is an old brass one. It really is. You know, valve cap, dust cap, but it's got the valve extractor on the end. So that's probably old and interesting, isn't it? This, uh, it's a stud, it's a new stud. Must be for a jacket I got or something like that, I don't know. But that's uh, that's a bit boring actually. That, look, you see when you make things, you need these, you know, it's a nice brass thick washer. You know, so that's just in there. And there's an O-ring, don't know what it came off. But, uh, you know, we're going to need it sometime. Picture hook, if I... Fancy hanging another picture on the wall if I get a nice one and decide to print it out. Got a picture up. So I mean, well, it's useful, isn't it? And I mean that. Oh, I say it was so interesting because I never finished it off. And the reason I didn't finish it, it's got a hole in there. I'm not. If you, I bet you can't guess what it's for. I had it made it work. Well, years and years ago, early eighties. And the only reason I never finished it, I couldn't get a dying tap, and it's actually an adapter for my Mark One Escort, so that I could have a fill, uh, an oil pressure gauge, and a switch on it. So in that hole, which should be threaded, um, you put the switch in. That's for the oil light, and on that end, which should be threaded, you actually put the uh, pipe to the oil pressure gauge and um, that ends threaded of course and that was in the block but that never got finished but that was I mean you know years soon passed not it? so that's that there's a pair of scissors little scissors little nail clipper scissors they're handy for opening letters you've seen that there's a there's a tap washer there so if my tap leaks I've got a washer in there and there's a counter, and I know what that is, it's plain tiddlywinks. I don't know where it came from, don't ask me, but it's in there. You know, but this is just history, right? Now this is actually an antique. A genuine Victorian antique. It's not worth anything, but, you know, now, and I bet you can't guess what it is. I bet you've no idea what it is. That opens out, look, can you see? That opens like that to a hook. And I can tell you that every gentleman, every Victorian gentleman, used to have to carry one of these. And in his waistcoat pocket, there was a, a very, in his waistcoat rather, there was a very small pocket that this went in. And he had to take it with him. Well, I fooled a lot of people with this actually. They've no idea what it is. Or well, what it is, shoes didn't have laces, they had buttons. And it's a shoe button hook. Because what you had to do was push that through the eye, grab the button and pull it through to put your shoes on to go out. So it was a vital piece of Victoriana that gentlemen had to carry with them. Otherwise they couldn't even get home. You know, I mean, they're only pony and traps and are walking and you couldn't walk with your shoes undone. So that's absolutely vital. And this is the that... Um, I don't know how old it was, oh, been about 1968-ish, I think, I'm mini, I think, I think. And there was a lightning, 
you know, a um, not thunder and lightning, the aeroplane lightning, and it crashed near home. And it was all swept up, of course. Anyway, when we went round the field afterwards, I found that. So it's actually a piece of the lightning that crashed near Spilsby in 1968-ish. So, I mean, you know, who would believe that this could... This simple thing could hold so much in interest history. And even the bowl itself is interesting because I actually made it when I was 15 for my Duke of Edinburgh's award. And I did copper beating because my father was a blacksmith, of course. And what I had to do was uh, do some wood turning on the lathe and I had to turn template for it. So, I, so we had a, a flat piece of wood with a bowl shape in it and I had to beat that into it. Now, when you're doing copper beating, if you, if you notice, it's still a bit amateurish. It's not, uh, I've not planched it very well on the outside, but it all adds to a bit of interest. But um, when you beat copper, it hardens it, right? That's how it works. And you have to anneal it. And the, re the, the reason you, sorry, you anneal copper the opposite of what you do steel, because steel, to anneal it, you heat it up and let it go cool in the atmosphere, and to harden it, you put it in cold water, you quench it. Well, with copper, you do the opposite. You heat it up until it's very hot, and then you quench it in water, and it softens it, and you have to do it a few times to make it what they call malleable. So there we are. Anyway, I thought it was just a little bit of interest. You know, who would have thought? that a simple bowl on your sideboard or on your mantelpiece, wherever it is, that's where mine is, would hold so much history, you know, and of such interest, you know. So it just shows you that it's the simple things sometimes that hold the most interest. You've seen these programs on television, you know, all these historical programs, I'm sure you have. But, uh, you know, we can easily make our own. Right. Hope you find that a slight bit of interest for a change. See you later. Bye.